thank you so much uh, for joining. Um, it is a couple minutes after two, so we're going to actually go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Iran Davar Ardalan, and it's an incredible honor and thrill to um, welcome you are all here. We are recording this session, so just wanted to let you know. And it's a thrill to see so many of you here with us today. We'll be hearing from our Freedom Speaks editorial and technical team, our champions, as well as artists, poets, authors, and scholars who have contributed to this collection. So let me just take a moment and share my screen. Awesome. It's usually so easy to do this until <laughs> you have to do it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so many of um, the people who are here today with us on this call uh, have been part of, you know, creating this incredible experience. Um, our champions are listed here. And in a moment, we're going to be hearing from them. Um, I wanted to share that we've achieved this incredible uh, milestone together in the past few months. Uh, this meaningful project was born out of the brave social movement in Iran that seeks to empower self-expression. And today we show how through technology we can enable vibrant voices from both the present and the ancient times to be heard. Our prototype is very much rooted in, in um, our prototype is very much rooted in the work that we've done with women around the world. And it comes from um, history and literature and connects us through Iranian women from generations past, as well as those courageous women uh, who are taking part in Iran's movement today. Many of us are deeply connected to this land this faraway land of Iran and are inspired by its power, its spirit and its history and are determined to share that with the world through innovative technology. So we will be sharing today our journey on how we are exploring voice AI and how it can shape cultural understanding, how it can enlighten global perspectives on the Persian heritage at a time when the promise and the failure of AI tools are clearly prime and center our mission with Freedom Speaks has been to unlock a new world of Persian cultural discovery through the lens of Iranian women writers and poets. Technology tools like machine translations, text-to-speech, and data-curated songs and stories can help us build smarter AI that preserves the beauty of the Persian heritage and speaks out in favor of self-expression. And uh, full disclosure, I did put uh, my remarks in an AI tool called Jasper AI, and I think that they were improved. So what I'm saying is that as far as I'm concerned, that I want to be empowered to be even more creative. I am embracing AI tools because I know that my journalism training is going to make sure that I fact check everything, that I am ethical in how I produce and design stories, and that that will always ground me. I do make mistakes but I do learn from them, I hope. And so I do hope that as women and as members of the global AI community, the global voice in AI community, we can help inform its growth and that we can make it relevant, less biased in ways that will help all of us thrive. I'll put uh, the link of this presentation in the chat. So if there are any technical issues, you'll all be able to follow the presentation. Uh, I'll also be sharing the Freedom Speaks user feedback form so that those of you who have already been able to experience Alexa can give us your feedback. But uh, yes, I um, wanted to just simply honor this incredible team who has come all together, uh, volunteers working from Nigeria, New Zealand, the Netherlands, um, here in the United States, from Chicago, Seattle, New York, and Washington, D.C., also want to thank my amazing family, my husband, John Oliver Smith, my children, and significantly Nikki McClay, Karim Ardalan, Key and Robert Molesky, and Nisa McCoy, who are all former co-founders of IVAL AI. Our work in the past four years makes up the foundational premise for Freedom Speaks. And so this work is very much informed by all the years we worked together 
on the preservation of knowledge and culture through voice AI. So we'll begin in a moment and hear remarks by Maddie, Buva, Kerry, and Sahar. But I would ask that we first take a moment of silence in honor of the women of Iran. The powerful words Zan Zendegi Azadi, women, life, freedom, have echoed in all our hearts. And that silence that we just experienced must be something that they feel on a regular basis. And so what is it that we can do together to bring these voices to life in new and dynamic ways? Maddie, I'll turn it to you. Thanks, Devar. Um, I know that I so appreciate your leadership on this initiative and really bringing together women in voice, women in, a women in AI, and um, aligning us all on our values and a mission of amplifying underrepresented voices. And I know Women in Voice was founded to diversify those technologists who are developing tools and serving different languages. And so this is very much in, in the spirit of accessibil accessibility and worldwide global um, impact. So. Again, for the women um, in Iran who, whose voices can only go so far, um, it's been an honor to partner together with women all around the world to build something um, that honors them. And uh, I know the rest of our presentation will kind of hint at what's to come and all, the, all of the potential that this project has beyond what the team has created. So um, Women in Voice is a global nonprofit. We've got chapters in six continents. We've got women who are creative. Um, they're conversation designers. Um, they're machine learning specialists. Every part of the stack um, is represented in our community. And so if you're not a member, we'd love for you to join us. If you're just curious about voice AI, we're the place to be. So we've got a mentorship program and a membership program. Lots of exciting things to be part of, but um, I'd love to keep the spotlight on this event, and I know, um, Devar, I know you've got other folks to introduce, so I'll take it back to you. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll give it now to uh, Buva, please, from Women in AI. Thanks, Devar, and I'm excited to collaborate with uh, Devar, you and the entire team here at Women in AI and Women in Voice. Uh, as you know, all of us are joining from multiple continents. I'm based in New York, and I'm the Chief Ethics and Culture Officer at Women in AI. And uh, on behalf of our entire community of several thousands of women, we strongly support and stand with the brave women of Iran who are simply asking for basic human rights, uh, especially also with the recent chat GPT buzz. I'm thrilled how AI can not only spread the goodness of several Iranian women scholars and fighters, but I'm also interested to advance ethical and cultural implications. Uh, like for example, how can we enable human integrated algorithm efficiencies that uh, eliminate unconscious bias and not only be a voice of uh, uh, Iranian women, but for every single uh, woman striving for freedom. Uh, and culturally also our voice AI launch today standing with the Iranian women can certainly expand to be inclusive uh, for any woman globally. And I am looking forward to that. And I also commend you, Dabar, for uh, uh, working with Stanford University to dedicate our knowledge and uh, uh, make it like an open source for many more generations to learn and improve, uh, both from an ethical AI and a cultural AI perspective. Back to you, Dabar. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And let's go next to uh, Carrie, please. Oh, thank you so much. I must say, when you when you see a call come out from Davar Ardalan, your answer is immediately yes. How can I help? <laughs> that has been my response the second I saw Davar put out the the call because what an incredible leader, um, just truly truly incredible incredible leader. And and it's been such an honor to have the opportunity to collaborate with this brilliant brilliant group of technologists. It's been inspiring and educational. There have been some learning moments in working on this project, 
um, as we've tested and built out this immersive story experience designed for specifically for conversational interface, um, it's been really, really interesting because to date, so many of these experiences and data sets have centered around English centered language models, English centered data sets. So it's been truly, truly special to get to work on this and to to work on a project that is inspired by women's voices, which are not often amplified and um, to walk away from this project having created nodes of access and nodes of stories that aren't told broadly what an honor i truly truly hope that this project is a springboard for many more data sets many more immersive experiences many more data models and i can't wait to see what you who are called who are dialed in will build based on the inspiration of this absolutely thank you so much and uh, next, please, let's go to Sahar Maslum. Sure. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us first from across the world. We are so happy to have you all here. And we all thank to the amazing team of the leaders and the groups leaded by Dava Erdalan. And it's an amazing collaboration between all these women across the world. And I would like to emphasize from the basically, because uh, I am actually a senior research scientist at JP Morgan. And I did, uh, for example, my PhD and master's, both of them in artificial intelligence. From the technical point of view, I can tell you, I can actually tell you uh, the promises of the future for this skill. And this project is an ama amazing initiative that will create a um, significant impact in the world in the ways that we cannot see it now. It's beyond imagination now. And this, this skill is more than just the storytelling. So we are going to use this skill to improve the communication across the world between the nations and also pass these cultures and pass the language to the next generation. So this could be an amazing project and we are just shaping the future with this project. And this is the only first step of that. So we will talk about it more uh, in the panel discussion. Um, brilliant. Uh, yes, I'd like to now invite all of the women in AI team to uh, briefly introduce yourself, tell us where you're joining from, and we will hear from all of you in the two panels coming up. Uh, but yes, why don't you take it away, uh, Paris, Nikki, uh, Tina, Tali? Hi, my name is Paris Golov, and I'm a digital project manager um, and technologist based in the Netherlands, and I'm joining from Amsterdam today. Tina. Uh, hi, I'm Tina, an Iranian voice and hearing researcher, and I'm so honored to be part of this project. I had the opportunity to join this amazing team when uh, Maddie posted one of Davar's article on LinkedIn about finding ways to improve Persian language and AI. So my thank go out to Maddie for getting me introduced to this group. Awesome. Um, Nikki. Hi everyone, my name is Nikki McClay. I'm um, tuning in from uh, Auckland, New Zealand this morning over here. Um, and I'm uh, both a creative director and a conversation designer. So I'll be talking a little bit more on the um, on a panel later. So um, it's lovely to have you all here, thank you. Great, Tali. Hey everyone, my name is Tali Weinberg. I'm a conversation designer. Uh, based in Chicago, and I'm joining from San Diego right now. Amazing. And Kim. Hi, everyone. I'm Kim. I'm a software engineer joining from New York. Um, yeah, thanks. Amazing. And Azinwa Amadi couldn't be with us today. Uh, so I think now I would like to uh, invite our champions. Some are going to say a few words, and then we're going to be going into the first panel. Um, I'm honored to introduce Vita Milanian. Uh, she has been a friend for many years. She's a communications executive, but she's an ambassador for everything cultural heritage related to Iran. Um, I just think the world of her, and I'd love to hand it over to Vita Milanian. Thank you so much, everyone. This is so uplifting and so inspiring. Hello, good evening, good day, wherever you're joining us from. Um, thank you, women in voice, women in AI, and my longtime dear friend, someone who truly inspires me, and we're also proud of in the Iranian-American community, Davar Erdalon, for inviting me to lend my voice to this innovative and inspirational project. I'm especially excited about this initiative. Um, as soon as I heard it, just like the other ladies, I could 
not say no to her because I knew it's the right path and right thing to do as it weaves together my background as a native Persian speaker, my journey as an immigrant from Iran, my passion to advocate for women around the world and my lifelong career in global telecom and technology. Something not too many people know in the Iran American community because I've been so much uh, working in on the cultural front, but it's something that has really built the, my foundation and I, it's been something that we all have seen through the pandemic really connect us just like all of us here in this global beautiful community that we're here together. I'm forever committed to, committed to support and preserving the literature, poetry, music, dance, fine arts, architecture, and culture of Iran, while also supporting filmmakers, actors, producers, and anyone who entertains and enlightens the world with lives, loves, struggles, and achievements through storytelling. Voice AI makes it possible to create new human experiences, and in the case of Freedom Speaks, blending poetry, essays, and song. Let's keep in mind that for projects like this to take flight, internet access is essential. So please join me in doing everything possible to ensure that the people of Iran and the world living under oppressive regimes are not blocked from the internet and the rest of the world. Because when we connect, we educate, we serve, we grow, prosper, and thrive. I encourage you all to support this initiative, those of us who are joining here as a guest, and especially include children. As a grandmother of five, I'm super excited to introduce them to Alexa, through Alexa, to explore Freedom Speaks and learn about their rich heritage and culture. I know the three older ones, seven, five, and three, use it all the time, asking for different songs and sometimes even shopping. <laughs> and I'm sure they'll be excited to have this new command in their daily request, Alexa, open Freedom Speaks. And finally, let's not forget the generations before us who made so many brave journeys, building a diaspora around the world using Zanzi to capture and tell their stories that are priceless so that, you know, ensuring that the beautiful language of Iran is preserved and enjoyed forever by the global community. The work you all are doing at Freedom Speaks will greatly raise the bar when it comes to inclusion, equality, and liberty through storytelling and amplification of those stories, breaking down language barriers and connecting us all in new ways as humans. So thank you again so much for having me on. More power to all of you. Congratulations, woman, life, freedom. Zan Zendegi Azadi. Thank you so much, Bita Joan. Always so inspiring. Um, I'd like to go to uh, Brad next, Bradley Metrock, uh, the CEO of Project Voice. And he is one of the biggest champions there ever was for women in the field of voice and artificial intelligence. And uh, if it wasn't for Bradley, so much of us wouldn't get recognition for even the types of work that we're doing. So Bradley, take it away. <clears throat> Debar, it's great to join you. And uh, this is a lot of fun for me. Uh, I'm honored to, to be part of this. So um, my name is Bradley. I'm CEO of Project Voice. We do a number of different things to accelerate adoption and conversational AI. Uh, we run the main event for all this stuff here in the United States, Project Voice 2023, which could be coming up in April. Uh, we have a venture capital fund that looks to identify top people in the space and invest in them. We do a lot of we do a lot of stuff. And, you know, it's been fascinating to hear on this uh, call uh, people talking about just their uh, underlying respect. For Devar, which is uh, something I share, it's it's uh, it's fascinating to see how this space has brought powerhouse individuals to it. And Devar Ardalan is one of those people. Uh, she just kind of makes you sit up a little straighter uh, and uh, and and pay attention because um, you know, as I, as she and I have talked about many times. Uh, you know, this particular issue is not my cause, but she's made it my cause with her charisma, her uh, compassion, her devotion, her collaboration. Um, and she uh, was very early to the idea that this technology, uh, this conversational AI technology, whether voice, text, or chat, or whatever modality, will uh, take a big eraser to our stories, our heritage. Um, everybody's got one. Everybody's got stories that they would like to preserve. 
and uh, technology um, doesn't care about any of that. It'll it'll uh, hit the delete key on all of it unless we're intentional about it, and uh, and we make efforts together to 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 preserve the things that matter to us. So I'm uh, I'm inspired by everything she does. It just reminds me that sometimes uh, it's more than just the message. The messenger really, really matters. And Devar is that person. And she's brought all of y'all together, uh, watched her do magic uh, and the work she's doing with Freedom Speaks and all, all of you as a result of, 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 you know, coming together around this cause um, is, is going to impact a lot of people. It's not only going to impact Iranian women uh, who uh, can benefit greatly from the help, but many other cultures who will see the blueprint that Devar has provided with all of this, they will copy it and benefit from it greatly. I applaud the whole thing. I'm honored to be part of it. Oh, thank you so much, Bradley. And uh, looking forward to seeing you in Chattanooga for uh, Project 2023 in um, April. Um, I'd love to ask if Azar Nafisi is here. Uh, she had kindly uh, graced us. Uh, Azar, are you here? I saw her earlier, but um, I'm going to ask if Mahnaz Aframi uh, from uh, Women's Learning Partnership, who has been a mentor to many of us and who uh, in Iran was the first uh, minister of women's affairs uh, and a legend in our community to please uh, take the floor. Thank you. No, I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. I had put myself on the mute. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, Azar Jun, uh, because I know you have to go. So should we go to Azar Mahnaz Jun? No, let, let Mahnaz finish. Okay. Befarmain, Mahnaz Jun, thank you so much. If we could make Mahnaz the spotlight, thank you. Uh, actually, Dawar Jan, your name is Iran and you inspire all Iranians. And uh, thank you so much for bringing these fantastic people together for us to meet. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. Um, I just wanted to say that this uh, uh, effort that Iranian women have started, the first revolution in the history of the world to be created by women, especially women under this kind of duress, and to which men have joined. And, and that is an amazing thing. It has three different uh, types of uh, characteristics among many, but three important ones, which come from uh, the history of Iran. And uh, one of them is uh, the idea that uh, the the idea that uh, uh, of the positiveness of of their uh, statements, the uh, women, life, and freedom is something that no one can really object to. It's something that, that appeals to everyone. And uh, that, I think, comes from uh, a spirit like Furuha Farrukhzad. And if you don't mind, I'll read three lines of it. It's not about, Furuha says, it's not about anxious whispers in the dark. It's about sunlight, open windows, and fresh air, and a furnace wherein useless things are burned and a world pregnant with new seedlings and birth and ripening and pride. That is where that positiveness comes from. And I think that one of the symbols that they're fighting is the hijab. And that's symbolic, basically, of rep repression and limited uh, access. And uh, that, I think, comes from Podretul Ain, who about a um, century and a half ago tore her hijab off and died for it. And the last thing that I think is very important from that uh, uh, this particular movement, and I think we all are going to use this in, 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 in amazing ways, uh, is uh, the idea from uh, Jalaluddin Rumi, who said, beyond all talk of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field, I'll meet you there. 
And that idea, of course, is, um, I must say that uh, as the next words are the other side of silence, which is the title of my new uh, book. I hope I don't, uh, you don't mind my, my logging in. <laughs> <laughs> because it is the history of Iran, the modern history of Iranian women. Mm -hmm. so, but also that it talks about dialogue. You know, if you're going to be talking about changing things, about human security, about all of the things that we all want, dialogue and sharing is extremely important. And to end, I just want to say that my organization, Women's Learning Partnership is an organization of 20, uh, it's an organization of 20 partners around the world who uh, create dialogue-based curriculum in some uh, 28 languages, and they are all going to benefit by this project because this is something that it's not only about Iran, although we want to focus on that, but it's a prototype just as the uh, the part the partnership that I'm working with was really used the prototype of Iran in the 70s. This actually would be the prototype of Iran for a global women's movement, I believe. And thank you, Dava, and thanks everybody for sharing this with us and allowing us to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Um, just remarkable to have you here with us. Um, and I wanted to please ask uh, Azar if Azar, you would like to take the stage. Um, thank you, Dawarjan. Um, you, you know, it is such a pleasure and privilege to be part of this magical journey you have created. Uh, I was thinking about the fact that um, uh, every moment we're dying, and uh, there needs to be conclusive evidence that we have lived and how we have lived. Uh, so it is my pleasure to be part of what you have created. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit uh, to share with you my feelings about the struggles of Iranian women. And uh, I was thinking that uh, Iranian women are fighting not just against the Islamic Republic, not only because to get their political rights, but more importantly, their existential rights, their right to exist. For 44 years, this regime has confiscated our history, our culture, our dignity, and our identity as women, Iranians, and simply human beings even trying to gain control over our hearts, minds, and bodies in the attempt to reshape and redefine us, turning us into figments of its imagination, which is why um, I keep thinking about the Iranian women because they have discovered their power. No amount of violence by the regime can conquer millions of Iranian women who come into the streets saying no to them, no, you don't own me. Iranian women have discovered their power. If tomorrow women walk freely down the streets of Tehran and other Iranian cities the way they choose and want to be, it means that there has been a revolution, which is why the slogan of this great uprising is woman, life, freedom. Thank you so much, Azar, and um, our beautiful colleague, Jackie Leiden, couldn't be with us. Jackie and I worked at NPR together for over 20 years, and Jackie interviewed Azar Nafisi when she was a university professor in Tehran, and that was 1995, and I had the honor of producing that series for NPR News in 1995 called Iran at the Crossroads, and so much of it was anchored in Azar's magic and her conversations about how young girls were using can use their imagination to find power to empower themselves on you know what could be next or how they could identify themselves and so uh, just remarkable to have you here today. I'd like to turn it to Rachel Jones. Um, Rachel Jones is from the National Press Foundation. She is the director of journalism initiatives. And uh, Rachel and I uh, worked at NPR together. Um, she is now heading up remarkable projects at the National Press Foundation. And I'm so honored for you to be 
supporting uh, you know, this work. And really, I come at this from the vantage point of a storytelling technologist, because uh, as much as you know, I would like to think that I have the powers to bring change to you know, uh, historical events, uh, I don't think that that is my cause. I think my cause is how can I use what I know storytelling technology to amplify the voices that are happening similar to what I did when I was at NPR. So I'd like to turn it over to you, uh, Rachel. We've also collaborated with each other at National Geographic where I am now executive uh, producer, Rachel. Well, I have to start by joining the Devar Ardalan praise train because I worked for NPR for nine years but never got to meet her in person. We just worked remotely. She produced several of my stories, but. I have to say, when she explained this particular project to me, I felt literal chills because I spent a decade working in East Africa and I was supporting journalists, training them about writing about health and uh, uh, science issues, maternal health in particular. And I will always remember a young girl. She couldn't have been more than 13 or so. She was pregnant. She had a child in her arms and a, a toddler walking beside her. And the look in her eyes was so empty. It was so devoid of anything other than you know, where she was in this moment right now. And when I thought of the, the uh, patriarchy and its impact on women in, on the African continent who do most of the work, who do uh, most of the, the important things on the continent, I felt that a tool like this would be incredibly empowering in terms of giving them a voice, uh, allowing them to see more than than what, again, the patriarchy and culture has um, laid out for them. So it is an indeed an honor for me to be uh, even working with Art uh, Devar on this project and amplifying it in any way that I can uh, and, and supporting her in this work because I feel this is is the tool for social justice and women's issues uh, moving forward. It's it's the the clear way for women to connect with their power, their history, and their past. So it's a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you, thank you so much, Rachel. Um, we're going to be uh, opening it up to our first panel. I wanted to ask if uh, Dr. Farzana Milani could please join us uh, as we begin this next panel. Uh, Dr. Farzana Milani is at the University of Virginia and uh, for uh, many years has been um, a legend in the field of uh, empowering Iranian women through uh, her teachings, through her writings, uh, through her translations of the late poet Simin Behbahani. And um, so many of the uh, poems that uh, Farzane has also herself uh, translated uh, or collaborated on are inside of Alexa right now. Um, so Farzane, are you here? I saw Farzane's name, um, but she is part of us and, and her spirit is here. I'm sure that um, she might uh, be on mute, but we'll see. So why don't we open it up and please bring uh, Paris uh, Tina Sepide, Esa Saide, um, and uh, yeah, I'd love it to be able to just kick it off and talk about, and Leah, please join us, Leah, Mehta, Sahar, um, Adele, I don't know if you're here and if you'd like to join. Um, amazing. So as everybody joins, uh, and maybe uh, Man Maddie, you could um, add them to the spotlight if possible. If not, we could just be also a group, uh, the, the gallery view, if, if that's, if it doesn't work to put everybody in spotlight, it's okay. Yeah, um, I asked Adela to turn on video so we can add. So that, that's the only requirement. You have to be on video to be spotlight. Oh, okay, but let's bring in Sepide and um, let's see, I could do Sepide and Tina. Um, okay, let's just get. Okay. Um, oh, let's see. 
I think uh, Maddie, could you uh, add? I think Adelia just opened her video, but then I ended up putting everybody in the. So what we're going to do next is talk to the amazing um, Iranian Americans who were part of um, putting this uh, technology together, as well as the writers and poets who were part of Roars and Whispers. Um, these were the incredible uh, women. Leah Mehta is one of them, um, and Esa Saad is one of them, and Saida Gilani, who I'm looking for. And then I think we can get started. Um, if you see Saida Gilani, if you could please add her. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what we did is in November, we brought together um, remarkable women, Farzana Milani, Jackie Leiden, uh, writers and authors. And we said that um, there's many Iranian women going back centuries who have written remarkable stories and poetry that to be honest has to a certain extent been lost to history because um, I didn't know about him and I try to think that I'm well-read or well-informed. So maybe Paris, we can begin with you uh, to just reflect on what it's been like being part of this project. And then I'd like to go to um, Leah Mehta. Paris. Hello everyone. Um... As a first generation Canadian with Iranian origins, I was very much raised with the language and the music and poetry and culture. Uh, and I've always felt very deeply rooted in my culture and embraced it with pride and admiration. Um, but like many Iranians who grew up outside of Iran, I never had the chance to go to the country where my parents grew up. And it ironically made me much more drawn to the cultural identity. Um, so, with current struggles that Iranians face right now in the country, I feel even more connected and the responsibility to share with people around me and really to celebrate the language, one that's very deeply rooted in poetry and in love. Uh, so that's really why I was so excited to be part of this project and building a medium of universal communication about Iranians and our cultural nuances. So I was very grateful to be part of the project, um, one that brings culture and technology together, two of my favorite things, and very grateful to work with a group of such extraordinary women. Um, it's been very inspiring to me. Thank you. Thank you, Paris. Um, and uh, Leah, we're gonna go to you and I see that Dr. Milani is here. So Leah, let's go to you first. Uh, it was so amazing to have you at the Roars and Whispers event. And you recited a poem from Simin Behbahani. Uh, you stamped your feet. Uh, and yeah, tell me about that experience and just uh, what you think about being part of this project. Thank you, um, Devar. I'm so happy to be here. When I, when I say Alexa, open freedom speaks, I think of you, our storytelling um, chief technology officer who brought this vision to so many of us. Thank you all for including me and inspiring me. I'm in Washington, DC. I work as a writer and um, at the Alan Chu's International Writers Center that centers around literary diplomacy that celebrates international literary voices. But um, my heritage is kind of interesting in that I am part of an almost extinct community of Persian refugees that found their way to India over the last, you know, thousand years. Um, and that is my heritage. We're called Parsi Zoroastrians. And I'm from the center of Parsi Zoroastrian life and cultural life, which is <clears throat> the city of Mumbai in India. And um, at the same time, my culture is so deeply influenced by the multiple languages of India. And my, many of those languages have Persian roots. Azadi was the, was the word that was used by the Indian freedom struggle. And it is a Persian word. And now it is back in, in vogue again. But um, for me, this, this idea that we contain multitudes is an amazing thought that we're so many things at the same time and we can be in solidarity around some important ideas 
without losing that multitude of influences and identities. Voice and freedom has so much to offer. Freedom humanizes all of us, returns humanity to men and to women. Um, I've spent most of my life working in gender, in voice and agency, in international development in regions around the world. And now I'm in an arts-based organization. What I love about AI and voice AI in particular, and this initiative is that it brings art and the arts, science and culture together in ways that build curiosity and conversation. I love this collaboration because it ties into my personal purpose to always stand in solidarity with freedom and justice. This is about the cause of Iranian women, but it is a universal project. We celebrate each individual voice while recognizing our deeply complex human identities. So I, I'm really happy to be part of this. And I feel like it's connected me also to um, a, a rich feminist tradition through Farzaneh's work and through the work of all of the women who are here today, um, both in a contemporary sense and in a historical sense, it has really enriched my life and my own sense of how I have a conversation about these ideas. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Leah. And uh, Dr. Malani, we're going to go to you and then we're going to hear from uh, Sepide, uh, who is um, going to share some of her thoughts, and then Tina and Adele. So uh, maybe we could just keep our remarks to a minute so that we could get everyone's viewpoints in. But Dr. Milani, would love to hear from you. And thank you also in the presence of uh, our guests for how much you have inspired me throughout my career and uh, all the work that we've done together when we were at NPR. Uh, I think one of the last interviews that Simin Behbahani gave to NPR News was uh, when you and I collaborated together and put that story on NPR, but go ahead. Um, it's an honor to be here, uh, Davarjan. It's an honor to be in the company of such inspiring women. Um, thank you for everything you're doing. Um, in one minute, it, uh, it's going to be difficult to say much of substance, but all I want to say is that, um, as you know, for almost two decades, I have argued that Iran has witnessed not two revolutions, uh, the 1905-1911 revolution, the 1979 revolution, but also a women's revolution, a gender revolution, if you want to call it that. And I have believed, and I still believe, and the last five months have proven that women, in particular, women writers and poets have been at the forefront of this moderating, modernizing, democratizing movement. This is awe-inspiring. It has justifiably inspired the world and it will continue to do so. This is a movement that no government um, can kill, can put behind bar, can strangle. Um, the saga continues regardless of the brutality of the regime. And thanks to people like you, the world will hear it even more. Thank you for echoing the important voice of women inside the country who have in less than five months changed the image of Iran and Iranians in the world. I salute them. And I salute you and all the other dear colleagues that are working on this project. I feel honored. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Farzana Milani, University of Virginia. Um, and next, let's go to Sepide, uh, Sepide uh, Yazdekhasti, and Esau Sat, and Saida Gilani were all together with us at the Roars and Whispers event where we brought together artists and we shared poetry together. Um, so welcome to the three of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to talk on behalf of just all three of us today, just for the sake of time. So all of us had the uh, honor of being part of this uh, amazing collaboration with Dear Dover through the events we had back in November. And 
I think what brought all of us together last time was the powerful passion of uh, raising awareness about the Iranian women who have fought generation after generation to bring freedom to the lives of those living without it. And I personally, when I think about that, I feel sad and at the same time have so much respect for these women because some of them haven't even had the chance of experiencing the sweetness of freedom in their lives. And yet they've been engaged in the journey of achieving that. And the only reason I can think of that could be just because deep down they knew the actual value of freedom. So this journey is not yet uh, over for many of us. And I think it makes a perfect, meaningful connection with the ultimate purpose of this amazing voice AI project here. We owe that to ourselves and all those beautiful minds in the past and present who had their contribution to our uh, better lives. And now more than ever, we have to use all the gadgets and tools we have access to uh, smartly enough to build up on what previous generation have achieved so far and at the same time uh, pave the path forward as much as we can. Uh, as an AI practitioner myself who is um, using this technology for past 10 years in water industry, totally different application, but still with the hope to help the community save water for upcoming generation, it is really encouraging to me to uh, for me to see how the scope of AI application is expanding to other critical domains. But I think based on our experience of using AI for other problems, there are really two important points that we shouldn't overlook. The first one is um, what we've been already discussing so far about, about the data efficiency to train AI model. And the other one, which I always emphasize on when we are discussing the result of an accurate, precise AI model, which has been uh, also trained with sufficient non-biased data, which is kind of like a perfect example of good AI model, is actually data interpretation and decision making on how we as the decision makers should intervene after gaining this knowledge from AI. And I believe the same consideration is actually applicable here uh, to this uh, voice AI case, where once we learn about the struggle people have been or still are going through, it is on us to keep ourselves grounded and help them by transforming this knowledge to actions and uh, take steps, even if a small ones. Uh, thank you so much, Darjan, and to all of you for this opportunity and Zanz and the Gyozadi. Thank you so much. And as um, thank you, Sepide, Esha, and Saide, it was amazing to have your presence. And um, when we um, came together, uh, I'm going to throw it now to Tina and Sahar. Um, we actually wanted the name of our product to be Zan, but um, we had chosen in US English. And uh, the way it works on Amazon Alexa, depending on what language you're selecting, the name of the skill, the invocation that wakes up Alexa has to be English. And so we tried for 10 days to see if it would be possible for Amazon Alexa to be trained to say Zan. And, and it's because it, the Persian language is not an option with Amazon Alexa and Zan is not an English word. And so we changed it. And fortuitously, it's great because Freedom Speaks is so universal, but it just speaks to the problem that exists in this field that we're so far behind. There are other uh, large language models that are being built uh, in Europe. And I'm going to share an example right here in chat. I really want you to study this because to me, this is the model that we can use to do it for Persian. So this is the model. I'll just throw it right here. Uh, because we've got a lot of, um, we, we came to a lot of challenges when we were building this skill, um, especially because some of the names of the artists that we were um, introducing, TTS, which is the actual um, name of the Alexa voice, I wasn't able to pronounce. So take a look at Bloom, and I'm going to throw it over to Tina. Thank you. I'll do my best to make it short. 
Um, so this project means a lot to me for two reasons, basically. One is that I'm working on voice and voice AI, and this is like a hot uh, topic with many unanswered questions. And in improving AI, it applies not only to language processing accuracy, but also to cultural and historical context in which like the, the languages are used in that context. So this is what we need to do for Persian, which is like really rich in culture. The second reason, which is coming from the bottom of my heart, is about Iranian women. Um, so they've been at forefront of every fight for quality, human basic rights, and freedom in Iran in recent years. And they've always like forced a lot of obstacles and challenges. And guess, guess what? what? What did they do? They've always remained a driving force uh, for changes, for progress, and inspiring people all over the world with their um, like um, courages with their resilience and determination. So they were the basic two reasons that I've enjoyed a lot working on this project. And I think my long-term goal is to develop technology that not only could process a language correctly, but also can recognize and value the rich cultural heritage that underlies um, that language. So that was all about me. Wow, amazing. And you're in Chicago. Awesome. I'm, I'm based in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, okay, Sahar, let's go to you. Of course. So thank you so much again for this platform. Uh, because I'm an engineer, I'm always looking at these uh, projects or problems as an, from the engineering perspective. So I would like to emphasize some important points that maybe uh, other uh, people, a lot of my friends, they point out, but I would like to emphasize that this project, as I mentioned, is beyond just storytelling. It's just beyond even just Persian language. So with this project, we are going to inspire the whole world to basically how to begin storytelling, help us to convey and communicate the culture and heritage to the next generations. So this information could stay in this world and the next generation can use them to basically learn and to connect to their heritage, right? So especially, for example, second or third generation of Iranians uh, that are born in the US or outside of Iran. So sometimes they don't have this, they struggle with the feeling of this belonging to this culture. And now with this movement of like the college revolution in Iran, we now, all of us, uh, including those that are born outside of Iran, we are all feeling connected because of this storytelling, because of all these, uh, information that is going to be gathered together. So what I'm trying to get to that is that um, this skill, this project, beyond these uh, three main things that I'm going to mention, like basically improving the language model, something like chat GPT, which is lacking some languages, for example, Persian language. The second benefit could be bridging gap and communication between the generations between the nations and between the people for around the world. And the third one to be preserving the language and the cultures, which some of them could be distinct, uh, extinct very uh, soon. So there are two other more important points that I'm going to mention is that one of them is, so in the basically AI community, in the machine learning community, we used to say that whoever has, whoever has money is not rich, whoever has data is rich. So basically by adding Persian language, and this is storytelling a skill, to the data sets around the world, we are enriching these repositories and all the machine learning algorithms on all the basically large language models that are going to be trained based on this data would be enriched and we could leverage uh, this opportunity to include some of the benefits of our language, which is my last point. So Persian language is among a very few and rare languages around the world that is basically very uh, enriched in the culture, enriched in the language in a sense that we are not gender biased, right? So we don't use she or he when we are talking about uh, some activities or some people. So if you practice, for example, if you encounter this problem, for example, using Google Translates, when you are translating someone to be engineer, it's translated as he, as opposed to when you're referring to someone as a cook, uh, it's translated as a she, right? So it is very gender biased and sometimes it's lacking fairness. So adding Persian language as a very, um, enriched uh, language into these language models, we will improve basically some of the fundamental problems in AI, AI community. And as I mentioned before, we are shaping the future in a way that is still beyond, beyond our imaginations now. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for all of you for joining us. Um, we're going to turn now to uh, a core group of other women from Freedom Speaks, uh, Tali Weinberg, Nikki McClay, uh, Kim Mishra. Um, Izinwa is not able to join us today, but if we could really please uh, bring them up. Um, and uh, when we first began, um, you know, thinking about this um, as a feature for Alexa, um, and we were starting to do stories and, and poems, I think Nikki uh, really wanted to have the foundational design of this experience to be around uh, stories, poems, and music. So maybe Nikki, you could tell us a little bit about that. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, well, first of all, I mean, I, I have to say that, um, you know, anything Deva sort of like puts on the table is usually something that I know that once I go through the journey of actually embarking on, on a, a little project, um, there's like a whole part of my life that's being changed, even if it's a small one. And um, my understanding of, of why we use these technologies as well and how um, and the impact that, that they can make um, always expands. Um, so yeah, we, we, I, I wanted to really just make it really easy to use, obviously, and easy to navigate and have that real sort of um, distinction of being able to fall into uh, one of the categories, be it the poetry, the stories, or or just you know being able to just immerse yourself in the beautiful song that that features on there. Um, but yeah, it's not just about doing that and putting it together so it sounds great and looks great. It's about also innovating with these technologies um, and and combining the arts and culture like we've been discussing here. Um, in ways that we haven't done and using uh, a skill, uh, something as simple as a skill that can be incredibly impactful, but doing it in such an intentional, careful and beautiful way, I feel like is something that I haven't seen before and something that is also allowing us as women to collaborate and the solidarity that also we've been talking about as a community. And we may not identify from the same cultural community, but we uh, can all come together as a, a technical community and an artistic community and a beautiful, um, just sort of like sisterhood of being able to understand that we, we're here together. And I think that pulling all this together in such a simple, but also deeply complex way um, has been a huge success. Um, and I, yeah, I just think the process also lends itself to a lot of learning by able to, uh, you know, just be in a space. And when you're listening to something in your home, you can just sort of like, it gives you that space for reflection. So I think this platform is sort of allows you to be alone or with your family and in a quieter space, which I think is really unique. That's why I love working with voice and I love working with these skills um, because you don't have to be in this busy, busy, intense thing on your phone with everything popping off. It can be a really reflective, beautiful, um, and in this case, I feel like it's a really enigmatic space to learn and grow and reflect, um, which may sound over the top, but I don't think it is at all. I've really enjoyed um, experiencing it. Um, and yeah, with the help of the other women here, we've created something really cool. So yeah. Yeah, and and um, everything that you've seen um, around the uh, creative design also uh, of Freedom Speaks and the branding and the visuals is all created by Nikki McClay, who is in New Zealand. And she is one of the yeah. most magical women that I've ever worked with. So thank you, Nikki. So Tali, I think um, I just wanted you to take time on, you know, talking about how you put the conversation together. Uh, it's it's such an art, you know, and um, you gave it such amazing care. And so maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Tali Weinberg. Um, so I first off wanted to say thank you to Maddie for inviting me to join the project and to Devar for spearheading this initiative. 
<clears throat> it's been obviously an exciting opportunity to not only connect with international women in the conversational AI space, but also broaden my knowledge of Iran's culture and history um, and the current political movement. Um, so when um, the editorial team handed off the content to me, um, big picture, I was looking at the main goal of the skill, which is to highlight the voices of these Iranian authors, poets, and activists. So the skill needed to be simple in the sense that we didn't distract from the main message, um, the voices of these people. Um, another main goal was looking to reach a wide audience of users. So that included non-native um, Persian and Farsi speakers, but also Persian and Farsi speakers. Um, so that led to the main obstacle, which everybody has talked about so far, the technological issues relating to ASR and TTS limitations with non-English languages. Um, so we knew we would have users who are able to pronounce um, these names and words correctly, um, and ASR may not be able to even pick that up. Um, and then the flip side, users not being able to pronounce the names and words correctly, and ASR not being able to pick it up. At the same time, the TTS output, um, I'm a huge proponent. Um, I hate when I hear other languages are being butchered by TTS. It's very cringy to me, um, and it's not respectful to the language and the culture. Um, so looking at from that standpoint, I didn't want to hear uh, per Persian and Farsi language butchered throughout the skill, um, as that's a jarring experience. Um, overall, just wanted it to be a simple, as Nikki explained, um, cohesive experience that again highlighted uh, the voices of these women, um, as that is that is the ultimate goal. Yeah, absolutely, and and we did have to go back and forth a lot on um, the pronunciation of names, and we would write them in very cryptic ways so that the robot could know you know, how to pronounce them. And again, that's one of the learnings that we hope to take with us as hopefully we'll be able to speak about this in Stanford and other places about what it is in front of us, the task in front of us that could help uh, change this, um, you know, ecosystem. Um, Kim, uh, why don't you share a little bit about your experience? Uh, Cause you also, uh, you know, were part of uh, being able to create the, uh, develop the experience on voice flow. Sure, yeah, um, I'm Kim. Thank you everyone for um, join, inviting me to work on this project. Um, something that I thought was really cool and unique about this was that um, often AI and machine learning is focused on output and what the machine learning or AI can come up with. But I think it was really cool here to see the intention thought, in, thought through about what we put into it and making sure that pronunciations were right and that the users that interacted with it would uh, be using words that Alexa might not be hearing before and just really focusing on um, accessibility and interactions with uh, not necessarily what it was built for. And that was just really special for me. Yeah, incredible. Um, thank you so much. I think I'm gonna try uh, attempt to share my screen and play the demo for you, which is, uh, four minutes. Uh, let me see if that works. If not, um, it is on our YouTube channel. So maybe one of the other team members can pick it up, but let me attempt that. And also um, one of our colleagues, Zinwa Ahmadi wasn't able to join, but she has recorded a video, which you'll hopefully see at the top of this experience uh, demo if, if I can play it. So let's see if I can. It would be so nice if, if these other parts wouldn't show, but here we go. <laughs> Actually, I can do present and I think it'll be better.
Freedom Space is life. Hi, I'm Izuma Amadi. I'm a conversation designer based in Nigeria and a Women in Voice Africa ambassador. I'm super excited to be a part of the global team of women that created a voice AI experience that honors the Iranian women. Unfortunately, I can't assess the Alexa experience from my region. However, I'm super grateful for the privilege to show my support by helping to build a voice AI that elevates the voices of these incredible women. Iranian women are strong. They are champions. And I admire their strength and their courage. That is why this project means a lot to me. Of big virtual hug to the dedicated and the hardworking women that made Freedom Speaks a reality. Cheers! Alexa, open Freedom Speaks. Okay, here's Freedom Speaks. Welcome to Freedom Speaks, a storyteller dedicated to the courageous voices of Iranian women, past and present. Women have always been at the forefront. So you can experience this on any Alexa device, including your smart past. fridge. With Freedom Speaks, you can experience some of their voices. So what would you like to hear? You can say stories, poems, music, or more info. Stories. All right. We have a selection of six stories, each under four minutes. To navigate through the stories, you can say repeat, previous, next, or main menu. Let's get started. The first story is about the resilience of Iranian women and their centuries-old quest for freedom of expression. Okay, what would you like to hear next? You can say stories, poems, music, or more info. Poems. Sure. We have a collection of five poems, each under three minutes. To navigate through the poems, you can say repeat, previous, next, or main menu. Let's begin. The first poem is by Alam Taj. My name is Azar Nafisi, and I'm going to recite for you a poem by Alam Taj, who was born in uh, 1883 and uh, died in 1947. Uh, she was a housewife who uh, hid her poems uh, um, in her books of poetry, in Rumi and Saadi and Hafiz. And uh, her poems were discovered by her son after her death. Uh, she's a fierce uh, defender of women's rights. So what would you like to hear? You can say stories, poems, music, or more info. Music. Okay, you're about to hear the song One Zan. Written and sung by Phoenix Pagliacci and produced by Push.audio. To return to the main menu at any point during the song, you can say main menu. And now, one zam. Zan Zendegi Azadi. Women, life, freedom. Tired of hiding, tired of fighting I'm Tired of being pushed to the side And I'm tired of being walked over And so uh, I hope that you can uh, take um, a step and experience it uh, again. Maybe Maddie can share the feedback form uh, so that we can uh, get some of your feedback. We're going to open it up to questions in a couple minutes. I wanted to talk about uh, the inclusion barriers for the Persian language to um, emphasize some of what has been shared as we go to the questions and wrap up. Uh, the reason the Persian culture is not present in mainstream large language models is because Persian is not a widely spoken language in the United States, and so it is deemed not uh, as important really and is you know there's less demand for it number two developing support for a new language can be a complex and time-consuming process and companies are prioritizing adding support for languages that are more widely spoken this knowing that the iranian american community is one of the most affluent community who spends a ton of money <laughs> on a lot of things 
So it would just make sense that the Iranian community would be empowered to support uh, creating such an endeavor. And then there's a lack of high quality data. So Sahar talked about how it's all about the data. Well, there's a lack of high quality data and resources available for training AI models on the Persian language, except we have people in the room here who have remarkable libraries. And as uh, Buva mentioned, we're going to Stanford. We're going to be meeting with the librarian there to talk about how we can get access to these high quality data and resources for training. So how can we create this? Uh, I asked this question from ChatGBT, and uh, this is the response I got. To make me smarter in the context of the Persian language and culture, there are a few things you need to do. Um, I, there, there needs to be more high quality text data. These can be um, different forms of literature from the culture in the Persian language. Uh, there can be audio and video. There can be structured data specifically that gets tagged and then images and graphic. So as we think about what's next, uh, we are uh, hopefully, well, we are going to be going to Stanford, but the idea there is to connect AI researchers with Iranian studies researchers, librarians, writers, and musicians to create the first ever Persian and English, uh, English large language model trained completely transparently. So please click that uh, link on Bloom because that's a good example of how they're doing this in open and transparently. Second and most important is establish a responsible AI doctrine. What is the declaration that we are going to write around citizen and machine and culture when it comes to the Persian culture? And then thirdly, what is it that we think you know should be the first tool? We've created an Alexa experience. Uh, what is it that we think we should uh, create, whether it's expanding this particular experience or others that would be transformative in preserving the Persian language and amplifying freedom of speech. I have amazing children, but unfortunately, they don't speak Persian. Uh, that's my fault, I know. But is there a way that through AI, uh, they can learn or be able to communicate with people in Iran? And um, I think there is an incredible opportunity to do that. So um, briefly, we started in October. By November, we brought together the Roars and Whispers storytelling team. Uh, we submitted our Freedom Speaks application to Amazon for certification on Shabe al Da. Um, and then it was um, today, the week of the 44th anniversary of the Islamic Revolution, that we are launching it. And in March, we're going to be uh, going to Stanford. Um, I'll be sending this deck. Feel free to take a look at the other uh, presentations we've given and um, very much looking forward to seeing if any of you have any questions. Um, as we turn to uh, all of you, I'm very grateful that uh, you're still you know, here with us. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts. So feel free to share any thoughts. Um, I do definitely want to um, Thank from the bottom of my heart, my father, Nader Ardalan, who is here on this call, and my sister, Mani Farhadi, as well as my brother, Karim Ardalan, who have always supported me uh, and have been my uh, mentors and inspiration, especially my father, for the importance of preserving culture and making sure that cultural data is counted as equally as important at, as other socioeconomic uh, data when it comes to um, being able to uh, understand cities and communities. Um, so yes, anybody would like to ask a question or share any other thoughts? We've got one question from earlier. Could non-AI Iranian women, Iranian women um, who could share their experience with this group join? Do you have to be in, a, in, in, a, in AI to be part of this group if you're an Iranian woman? Um, no, I mean, I think that that's the beauty of what is the task ahead of us. Uh, you have to bring um, a multidisciplinary approach to what we do. And I think it's really important to have people from different disciplines, uh, but you know, start small. We started small with this project, right? And so the next thing we do uh, needs to uh, inform what happens next. And I think uh, 
you know, people who have different backgrounds should be able to contribute, but know that this is all completely volunteer, the, the 11 of us who did this, and, um, you know, all the funding initially and for now has come from myself. So I just want to make sure that we don't give the impression that this is a largely funded project. This is a, you know, an opportunity to be able to inspire all of you to help us grow the project. It might be good, uh, just Maddie, for yourself to maybe talk about, you know, ways that we can work with you, uh, women and boys, to be able to uh, bring more visibility to this project. And maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, for Women in Voice, we have a lot of some people on this team are for our ambassadors of Women in Voice in their own local communities. So Azinwa is an, a WIV ambassador in WIV Africa. Tali is a WIV ambassador in a chapter that will be launching soon. Um, Nikki is a WIV ambassador in Australia, New Zealand. And so I think um, the more we share about, you know, the, this meeting is being recorded, we'll be publishing that. Um, and I think that, you know, we will we'll continue to share what where we've been, where we're going as a, as a group and what our projects um, are based on. It's the timing of chat GPT blowing up has been really interesting to see um, for you, Devar, to see what the results are, like how informed are these large language models about some of the women that we're amplifying through this skill. So um, we'll be, like you mentioned, we'll be at conferences coming up. If, if there's any conferences that you know about in the audience that um, this group should be speaking at, please um, contact Devar, contact me, contact Buva. Um, and I know Women in Voice and Women in, in AI will um, continue to look for opportunities to co-amplify and co-present as well. Um, I know Women in Voice has an annual summit as well. Um, and Devar, you're gonna be at Project Voice, which Bradley is hosting in April. So there's lots of ways that we'll continue to spread what spread the news about this app. Um, but beyond the app, where are we, you know, what is the opportunity here to, to do this with other languages and to help continue to bridge that gap um, that's currently missing in a lot of these technologies. Um, beautiful. And Buva, maybe we can hear from you as we um, say thank you and give gratitude and um, farewell. Sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, David and everyone for connecting today. And again, like uh, Maddie mentioned, uh, we are going to collaborate together between Women in AI and Women in Voice along with Davar. So if there are any other uh, initiatives where we should be presenting. The goal is not just within this scope of uh, Iranian women, but also for all the women, how we can be more inclusive and also bring the voice of uh, freedom everywhere, right? So uh, please connect with me. I put my LinkedIn there um, with Maddie, Tavar, uh, Carrie, anyone in the team, happy to support. And uh, from my perspective where we can more um, uh, collaborate and contribute is the ethical and the cultural AI piece of it, right? So again, like Maddie and uh, Dawar mentioned, the with chat GPT also coming in, uh, there are positives and negatives, but then our goal is to uh, elevate some of the challenges with technology and also bring a human element to it. So happy to support if uh, anyone has uh, any expertise or ideas in ethical AI or cultural AI, please do ping one of us and uh, we can collaborate, need not be an AI expert uh, uh, per se, um, just need ideas and uh, different ethical and cultural views uh, to support. Thank you, Dabar. Absolutely. Um, yes, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, look forward to staying in touch and feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. Wishing you a beautiful uh evening if you are in the United States. For Nikki, it's already the next day in New Zealand. So we look forward to seeing another day. And thank you so much for everyone joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you.